Hello and welcome to this lunchtime edition of Highway to the Zemus Zone. Uh, today we have two great runners for you. We have Sheep Launcher versus Imperial Dragon. And uh, this is a rematch of sorts. These two runners met in the first round where they had to complete an absolutely brutal, almost three hour seed rolled by our very own dear Scala Kitty. Um, for some reason, they have allowed Scala Kitty to roll their seed again today. Um, so we will see what we are in for. I am joined in the booth today by my lovely co-host, Alice. Uh, Alice L., uh, what do you think of these objectives? So these objectives are kind of interesting in that they're all things that we usually don't do. Um, as runners, well, most people will open the treasury, but unlock the sealed cave and burn the package, burn the village mist with the package. Not things you usually do, but um, yeah, required in this seed. And it is going to be a true key item hunt. Yeah, for sure. We are definitely going to have to get underground access, being that two of our objectives are underground. Yeah, we're going to need that package to uh, burn the mist village. We're going to need an earth crystal. Um, and of course, that first objective, you always need three key items away underground, a legend sword and an adamant rock. So it is key items all the way today. And I know Chad is probably hoping for some trolley key item locations. <laughs> yeah, always. Always. We should be getting started pretty soon here. And it looks like we got a Yang start, which is not a huge deal in the group flag set because we do have free characters turned on. So there are a lot of easy to pick up characters on the overworld. There's two characters in Mesidia. There's one sitting guarding the hovercraft and Damsian. There is one in the Watery Pass, and there is a character up on Mount Ordeals. So uh, your starting characters aren't as big of a deal in this particular rule set. Well, and if they can find a Darkness Crystal in Atella, they can launch that Yong into the stratosphere level-wise. And it looks like we're getting started here, and we are pairing our Yang with a Dark Knight Cecil, and a trap door is giving us a Sand Ruby. So uh, if you want even more character checks, uh, this is your start. Yep, um, Dark Knight Cecil, kind of a interesting character in these flags. Uh, vanilla Agility is turned on, so... As long as you have that Cecil in your party, he is going to be the one controlling your agility. Yeah, it makes him a figurative and literal double-edged sword. But then again, a crystal sword Cecil uh, forgives most sins, so... <laughs> yes, the crystal sword is power overwhelming, and you don't really need Zeromus to be slow when you're doing 5,000 damage a hit. And it looks like we have a Rydia in the inn, guarded by a blue-robed figure. Could be a water hag, could be an alt gauntlet. So I believe, since there's only one blue robe, that is the uh, water hag? Ah, yes, you would be correct. Which leaves the uh, promise of a rude alt gauntlet somewhere else. Yes, you always love to see that gauntlet at Ogopogo with all those uh, enemies you wouldn't otherwise see, those dark masks and... Uh, what is it? Zeromus's breath. <laughs> Anywhere on the moon is actually exceedingly rude, as I've found out in a few of my seeds. Yeah, if you're well-leveled, it can actually be really good for end-of-game experience, but yeah, those enemies hit hard and fast. So Imperial Dragon just looting out Baron. Sheep Launcher gonna go see who the characters in Mesidia are. And we have a Sid 
in Masi it's Masidia now. And a Palum. What a great early game team. Yep, uh, Sid has excellent agility, or not agility, utility um, early game, having tons of health. And a Palum is always a nice pickup. He learns Quake super early and is a great endgame character. Yep, and if he gains one level, he starts learning those level two elemental spells, which are really excellent for the early game. And Imperial Dragon, finding another Sid here in the Watery Pass, goes ahead and picks him up. Yep, so Sid's early game weapon, the uh, the hammer, um, actually, the wooden hammer, I should be more specific, actually has really good damage for this point in the game. And he also comes with quite a bit of HP, letting him survive through a bunch of these early game bosses. Um, our runners are looting out the watery pass. We do have the T-Wildish flag on. Um, the treasures in the watery pass have a slightly higher value. Um, so you will find slightly better items here than, say, Baron or Damsian. Yep, and our runners did pick up a ninja sword from the waterfall. Very nice item if they find an edge. Looks like we're just continuing to loot here. Not too much good in Damsian. An elven bow can situationally be very useful. Ooh, but a curse ring up on sheep launcher's side. But why would we want a ring that lowers all of our stats? Um, because agility. This was the very first active time battle system ever developed. And uh, they were still kind of working out the kinks of exactly how we're going to make a real-time turn-based game. And thus, agility in this game is very interesting. Um, it would take me a while to explain all the maths, but the curse string lowers your agility by 10 points, which can be used to sneakily slow down your enemies compared to the rest of your party. I've found that agility manipulation is witchcraft. It is, um, but there are several several items in the game that can raise or lower your agility, and they are all very useful um, for making bosses go slow and four out of five of your party members go fast. And as, uh, as someone said in chat, let's see, that was Pyrelight. Oops, all SIDS. That is our third or fourth Sid on the overworld. And Sheep Launcher decides that two Sids is enough for his party and goes ahead and lets the third Sid go on his merry way. Yep, the recovery flag is turned off, so once you dismiss a character, they are gone for good. But it looks like we're going to get some progress with Sheep Launcher heading into the Antlion Cave. Uh, this is contains one of the easiest bosses in the randomizer, and it is also quite dense in treasure chests. So it is a good place to pick up some gear. And as you can see, our runners are having a little bit of trouble with the uh, T spares on as... Um, not finding a whole lot of treasure chests that are uh, ready to be opened. Yep, we have sent through a small band of very careless pirates, and they have preluded us about 60% of the treasure chests. At least that's my headcanon. And Imperial finding a cane here up on Mount Hobbs, guarded by a set of tentacles. Um, Kane is a great pickup, um, has great endgame utility. 
That is for sure. Um, we're packing some pretty good power right now, so this Octomam shouldn't be too much trouble. Of course, Octomam's gimmick is that the more you attack it, the slower it gets as it loses tentacles. I feel like that should be a gimmick for everything. <laughs> I know, I sure get slower the more you hit me. <laughs> okay, that, that wasn't... that was funnier in my head. I was trying to make a joke about middle age. Middle age is rough, y'all. Oh, my body. <laughs> exactly. But we see this uh, Sid kind of getting a bow added on and then putting the hammer back on. Um, something that was obviously a feature and definitely not a glitch in Free Enterprise is um, when you equip a character with a ranged weapon, they are assigned the back row setting. And when you take that off, it's never removed. And it is time for leg. Uh, our antlion boss is Rubicante. Uh, even the Ice 1 on Palum here should do pretty good damage on this Rubicante. Um, so this probably won't be bad. Meanwhile, Imperial Dragon beating that Octomam, picking up their cane, and heading out. Of course, the real danger here is, is uh, Rubicante's uh, glare spell. Even in a low power spot like this, that's still gonna do some some ouchies for sure. Yeah, and unfortunately without a healer so far, um, those fire two spells are starting to add up pretty quick. But gets through. And we'll see what our key item is today, or at least possible key item. A blizzard spear. Well, if you go up to Mount Hobbs and get that cane, that's going to be useful, but uh, it is not progress. And unfortunately, the main boss that you'd like to use that blizzard spear on uh, was the one who gave it to you. Yep, I guess uh, guarding his greatest weakness today. But Imperial Dragon following behind, um, gonna be really, probably really excited to see that Blizzard Spear. Whereas Sheep Launcher is going to go ahead and give us the Sand Ruby check. Oh, and that was so fast, I missed who was in the bed. That was a second Cecil. So, mm. that makes it very interesting. <laughs> the bed is actually a really great place for Cecil because uh, you can just keep him there until you find a crystal sword. You don't have to take him and now and say, oh, well, I hope to get a crystal sword. You can assure yourself that you'll get a crystal sword first and then come pick him up later. Yep, and back to that vanilla agility. If um, you have two Cecils, the one in the high, higher priority spot is the one who will be controlling the speed of all the monsters. So you can level that second Cecil up as high as you would like. Imperial Dragon getting her Blizzard Spear. Meanwhile, Sheep Launcher uh, just looting out some towns, checking some shops. Um, early game items are important, especially cabins. I always feel a little nervous until I find a stack of cabins. Also, finding, <laughs> speaking of cabins, finding cabins and also the very important exit items, um, which function the same as the exit spell, 
Uh, we don't have anyone who can cast exit, so getting a couple of those exit items is very good right now. Absolutely. Without any white mages, um, you don't want to have to walk back, uh, back out of some of these dungeons. Uh, especially the later dungeons, like uh, anything on the moon, basically. I have definitely realized I don't have a way to quickly exit the moon before, and then had a slight panic. But it looks like both of our runners are converging here on Fabul. I'm gonna go ahead and do this check, and hope to get a key item that leads them underground, I'm sure. Yep, one nice thing about this fight is you get a free full heal both before and after the fight. And it looks like it is just King Queen Elblin here attacking the castle. Yep, they will literally burn themselves out after a while if you just leave them be, but sometimes it is faster to kill the king. Um, if you kill the king, the queen will just give up and go away. Um, but if you don't have high enough damage output to kill the queen king quickly, then it's just better to let them do their thing. Yeah, so this is a place you hate to see King and Queen Eblin. Um, getting an easy boss in an easy spot means there's going to be a harder boss in a harder spot later. And that is, this is actually the second of our three bosses that we've seen, so um, kind of dwindling. Yeah, we are gearing up for a difficult underground and moon at this point. And let's see what the King of Fabul has to give us today. A hook! Ooh, and a, and, and a little bonus coffin. That's nice. So, we still have a few checks left, so we're not guaranteed to have a hook route, but it is a possibility now. Now, if you were these runners with this team, would you check every single available location before diving that hook? Um, let's see, what do we got left? We got Mount Ordeals in the Inn. I probably would. Um, when you're doing that hook route, just having those few extra levels is such a huge help. And plus, you also have the possibility that there could still be a magma key out there. Absolutely. You don't want to do a hook route and then find out that your opponent found a magma key somewhere else. An Imperial trying to decide if it's worth it to sell that ninja shirt. Yeah, it is worth a lot of money, and um, the only person who can use it is Edge, and he already comes with a black belt, which is pretty good by itself. Sheep Launcher heading into uh, Troya Castle, probably going to loot the parts of the treasury that are open without the Earth Crystal. Does pull out a Lilith Rod, which will be great for that Palum. And a Black Belt, which will be great for that Yang. Meanwhile, Imperial Dragon heading over to Mount Ordeals. Uh, she hung on to that Cecil, so is definitely going up here to get him online. 
The mountain can be a bit slow because it is three boss fights that you have to do, but there is also a key item check up here. And, and there's a character who happens to be Edge. Definitely glad to see an early Edge. Um, he comes already at level 25, has some great gear, and is probably going to be your highest damage dealer for a while. Yep, and I know we have been picking up great equipment for him along the way, so we'll see if Imperial Dragon held on to any of that. She did. We got a ninja sword and a mute knife, which does extra damage to mage type bosses, um, which is great for Ashura. It's great for the two Baron guards that cast uh, Piggy and Small. It's great for exactly one phase of element. It's good for the Magus sisters. Yeah, and the edge with a mute knife can do some serious work on those Magus sisters. But it looks like we have a Levitan or a Leviathan. Um, Edge doing some really good damage here. And I believe uh, Imperial's Palum has lit too. So this should not be uh, too hard of a fight. Yep, gonna go ahead and cast some lit too there. And I don't see this danger noodle st uh, surviving much longer. No, me neither. I'll be amazed if it survives this this lit. And it did not. Ooh, finding Cure Threes over on Sheep Launcher's side. Uh, given the fact we have not found a White Mage yet, that could be very important. And we have some guards. That is freebie number three. I know. We are gearing up for a super rough moon. The more free bosses down here, the less free bosses on the moon. And it looks like Sheep Launcher is going to go ahead and take on this water hag. Yep, the Water Hag obviously will be zero problem. It is a scripted boss, three type or er, uh, three hits with any type of damage, and it goes arg and disappears. Um, but we don't know what the second boss in this location is, and uh, it has pretty high attack power in that spot, so it can be rough sometimes. And we see Water Hag going down. Ooh, and a Mist Dragon. Bonus round. Um, we have the free item flag off. So defeating the Mist Dragon will spawn Rydia's mother in the mist. And talking to her will give you a key item check. Meanwhile, over in Ordeals, we get a twin harp! Get your harps out in chat. It is time for harp hype. Now that's an interesting pickup, because then do you continue to follow this rabbit hole hoping that maybe there's a magma key at the end? Um, oh, and we have the Magus sisters, so that mute knife is just gonna slice through here. Uh, would I? I probably would. I'm a person, I really like having high levels if I'm going to have to go do a hook. Um, so I will chase those rabbit, personally, I will chase those rabbit holes just for the extra levels. Though uh, the sisters showing how dangerous they can be by confusing Edge, um, get your own party to do their dirty work for them. And this Mist Dragon going pretty good. Uh, this spot does hurt pretty bad at this point in the game, but um, this Mist phase really gives you some time to, you know, get your characters up, get everyone healed. 
Um, we do start the game with a little starter pack of items that, incurs, that includes life potions and cure twos. And funnily enough, this is one of the few bosses that Dark Knight Cecil can actually do some sort of work in. Except if he could stay alive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Palum finishing the job off, and we'll see what we get from this. It is a pan. Yang gets the instrument of his own demise. Um, I always love having the pan before I go underground because that means I'll only have to walk through the self cave once. Yep, there's nothing worse than having to do a triple dip of Fabul and a double dip of Sylph Cave. Imperial also finding those Cure Threes in the Baron shop. Um, <laughs> without a White Mage, those are those are super super important. Looks she, like. Go ahead. It looks like Sheep Launcher just flew past the Village of Mist, not checking that. Uh, Miss Dragon. Ooh, that is so easy to forget. Especially when you're you're in a race, you got a million things on your mind. We'll see if this is a routing choice or if he just straight up forgot. Nope, he's getting back in the airship, so this might just be a routing choice but doesn't look like we're going to miss just shopping, I think. Hopefully he remembers after his shop checks to go ahead and go turn in that D-Mist. Oh, wanting to buy that Sylph spell for Rydia. Um, Sylph is a very good summon. Um, it does both healing and damage. It's pretty high level for its MP cost. And we do have the Sylph MP glitch turned on. So uh, as long as you have 25 MP, you can cast that Sylph spell. It does not subtract MP from your, uh, your MP total. But of course, uh, Rydia is, doesn't have 25 MP yet, so she will need a battle or two before she can even cast it. Yes, and as Rex Rall mentions, that glitch does not work if Rydia is the middle character. Huh, I didn't actually know that. And it looks like Imperial is also taking Rydia, getting rid of that Yong. And it looks like Sheep Launcher might be going to the hook route without checking Miss Dragon. Oh no! It's so easy to forget! Hopefully just checking the shops. And there is a character down here too, but... Well, we're gonna see if that's a big mistake or not right now, because Imperial Dragon talking to Rydia's mother and getting... Drumroll, drumroll. A rat tail! So, if that rat tail turns into a magma key, uh, Sheep Launcher could be in trouble here. Uh, we do have a hook, we have a hubbercraft, so we can turn in that rat tail right away. But meanwhile, on Sheep Launcher's side, that was a loaded shop. Sirens, Bacchus, Star Veils, and Mute Bells all for sale. Ooh, it's like the uh, Endgame Experience Grind Starter Pack. Yeah. 
and runs into that stalemate chest and is like, eh, don't want to do this right now. But now he knows where it is, so he can open every other treasure chest safely. And we get half of objective one from our rat tail, which is the legend sword. So, uh, sheep launcher for getting that mist dragon could be trouble, but it's too early to tell. But we'll see. Looks like Imperial may be heading now to Eblin, or may just be dropping off their uh, hovercraft. Looks like it's just a hovercraft drop-off. We'll see if uh, she decides to do music first, which she is heading towards Fabul, so it's possible. Um, or if she just just shopping and decides to go chase that hook route. Troya, yes. Location names are difficult. Fictional location names, doubly so. It's early, y'all. But we have a Rosa here in the hook route. Oh, our what first a sight Yeah, our first sighting of a white mage. And a great white mage at that. Uh, Roses, aside from being an excellent archer who can actually do damage with appropriate arrows, um, Rosa's HP growth is much higher than the other available white mages, um, which makes her much more endgame viable. Now, her one disadvantage is she does uh, learn some of those utility spells like Blink and Berserk um, later than the other white mages. But her NP or her endgame HP growth is just worth it. And it looks like Imperial is heading towards the Dark Elf spot. Uh, do you want to tell everyone why I'm so excited about this? Well, we figured that um, Edward's song that he plays is not so interesting. So, like many other things in the randomizer, we decided to change it up a little bit. So instead of the normal um, harp song, you will hear things like maybe Kefka's theme from Final Fantasy VI or Radical Dreamers from Chrono Cross. Yep, one of my favorites is the Tetris theme. Um, but I think we're going to be quiet here for a few minutes so that we can listen to some music.
Okay, I wanted to let the music loop once first, but... Uh, Imperial Dragon have some trouble with this fight. Uh, this... The Dark Elf spot has ridiculously high magic defense. Um, and now we're frogs. But, uh, I was gonna say, and doing just regular attacks here will, uh, proc some virus counters, which are extremely nasty. Um, Kane, luckily, the jump, the jump command does not, uh, does not trigger that script. So, uh, the jump's helping out a lot here. And now that there's only one D-Lunar left, it's gonna keep continuously cast this fire spell. Um, so we'll see if Kane makes it through. I think one, uh, one more jump. Ooh. Ooh. Nope, that Cure 2 is probably gonna do it. I think one more jump will do it here. Yep, this is an exceedingly rude place for the D-Lunars because you really want to use magic and you can't, um, you can't on them because it doesn't do any good. Kane's just barely hanging in there. Oh, but we get the frogs! So there is a backup strat. Um, one thing that was interesting that we discovered uh, during the randomizer process is that the D-Lunar's breath attack is in fact reflectable. And, and on top of that, D-Lunar is not immune to the frog status. Oh, but only when it's reflected from breath. You can't- it's complicated, but you can reflect the breath back and turn the dragon into a toad. But unfortunately, just a stardust rod. Yeah, not what Imperial Dragon was probably looking for, but it is a great item. And I do believe with that, we are locked into a hook route. I think someone has checked every possible key item location thus far. Little froggy running through the forest. Yep, and we see Imperial Dragon heading towards that hook route will get her, um, her Rosa, which I'm sure she'll be very happy to see. Okay, I'm being more corrected. It's that breath doesn't, uh, gets through the boss bit, basically. But frogs, that's the important part. Frogs. But while we had music, uh, one interesting that did, thing that happened on Sheep Launcher's side was he did drop that Cecil um, for the edge. And that might give him an edge because uh, that vanilla agility anchoring can be quite brutal. Imperial Dragon seeing all those good items in the Eblin shop, selling anything she can get away with not having, and is probably going to pick up some of this really good stuff. Sheep Launcher getting through ordeals. Ah, that feeling when you just don't have enough money to buy all this good stuff. And this is unfortunately not a very convenient shop to get back to. Nope, it requires getting back to the overworld, finding a ship that can carry an aircraft, or a hovercraft, moving the hovercraft, going through at least one cave, screen of cave. It is uh, a bit of a hike.
And it looks like Sheep Launcher is going to give us a reprise of music. Uh, which I don't think we mentioned, by the way, because uh, a lot of people in chat knew it. It was uh, Hopes and Dreams from the, the true ending of Undertale. Very good, a very good rendition of a very good song. Which uh, I had not heard that one before, so so that was a nice surprise. Imperial Dragon also running into the Staleman chest. Looks like we're gonna try to take him down here. Unfortunately, Cecil is still equipped with a Silver Staff. And I just don't think Edge and Kane have enough firepower here. Oh, got one down. That's a good start. But as we're finding out, one unfortunate thing about the Staleman is that uh, you can they can punch you to sleep. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but they sure can do it. And Imperial getting the unfortunate news that Stalemen are immune to the coffins. Um, yeah, a surprising amount of the giant type enemies, so the Stalemen and all the ogre type enemies are immune to coffins. A surprising amount of just, uh... Random mobs are actually immune to instant death. Ooh, and a dwarf axe. Uh, that can be very useful. Um, the dwarf axe is a back row weapon, so it can be used to uh, back row glitch characters that are otherwise difficult to back row glitch, such as Kane. Yep, and it also decreases agility by five, which um, if you're trying to set up a uh, agility manipulation, definitely a big help. Okay, and we will let y'all enjoy this reprise of Undertale here. And Sheep Launcher discovering the rudeness of those Lunar Dragons. Um, even Rydia's Leviathan spell, which has super, super high magic attack, uh, was just barely able to eke through the, mer the, uh, the magic defense of that spot to get a few hundred uh, uh, damage in. But Imperial Dragon, uh, picking up her Rosa, is ditching Cecil. Not too surprising. We haven't found a good weapon for Cecil yet, and that Vigilid Vigility... Vigility, that's the second time I've said that. Vanilla Agility Anchoring is, uh, is no joke. Nope. Um, definitely one of the more advanced things. And if you don't really have to deal with it, 
um, and you don't have a weapon that kind of makes it worth dealing with, definitely better to dismiss that Cecil. Which I totally was not paying attention. What boss did we see in the Rubicante spot? I think it was a purple robe? I don't know. We'll see. And Venerable pointing out it, it was either Mylon or Mylon Z, so it was a purple robe. And Imperial Dragon immediately running into this trap chest. Uh, this can be a very good fight for experience if you have the tools. Um, these ogres are technically mages. So uh, that mute knife getting a workout again. And uh, I'm sure Imperial Dragon will try to life glitch as many of these ogres as uh, she can while still keeping her team alive. Unfortunately, these ogres having none of that. Yeah, but even if you don't get any life glitches off, this is still really good experience for this point in the game. It's just a super extra nice bonus if you can get even more experience on top of that. But yeah, these ogres being incredibly rude with their targeting. And speaking of rude places for an alt gauntlet... Oh my! Um, the sag is nice at least. The uh, rare- we see a lot of eggs in this uh, this randomizer because of our very favored egg grind, but we, we rarely see Lamia eggs. We mostly just see uh, yellow dragon eggs. And I didn't see what we got from the trap chest. Me neither. I was distracted by a Lamia egg. The other benefit of Alt Gauntlet here is you get a little bit of a grind. Yep. All the enemies here give the experience they would normally give if you just uh, encountered them as a random encounter. Um, which is not too useful in some spots, but in this spot is probably going to give you pretty good EXP. And that Levia summon, if you can keep Rydia up. <laughs> oh, I cursed. You Sorry, just to have to say it. I, I cursed you. That is the commentator curse. but Imperial Dragon about to get the uh, awesome news about Alt Gauntlet. And unfortunately, this Mad Ogre is just being rude. Ah, but thank goodness for, uh, for that Mute Knife. Mute Knife is the hero of this seed so far. But the Salt Gauntlet, this is definitely where Imperial Dragon's few extra levels are really gonna, really gonna help her out. She did a couple of more checks than uh, Sheep Launcher did, has only a few more, but just those few levels are making the, the difference in this, this gauntlet here. Well, and that Kane definitely doing some work with, uh, with his jump command. Yes, Scala Kitty, it's awesome news. The purple bombs. 
Well, I love this alt gauntlet because you get to see all these interesting monster designs that normally get skipped in the randomizer. Yep, you see boss or er, monsters you haven't seen since you played vanilla as a kid. These uh, these purple balloon bombs have some really nice uh, eye shadow going on. Ooh, and I unfortunately I think these explodes are going to be the end of Sheep Launcher here. Um, they are bomb enemies. If they get bored, they will just start blowing up. Now, I'm curious if those bomb enemies are vulnerable to reaction. Uh, I don't know. I only recent. I'll be perfectly honest. I only recently learned about that. So I don't know if that's just the bombs on the moon or if that's every bomb type enemy. But I just think these balloons need to do a makeup tutorial because they have some killer eyeshadow going on. Not sure how they would, uh, because <laughs> they have no arms. I know! <laughs> And we see the sorcerer with the blade men, the source of a very, very niche grind. Ooh, and those blade men doing work. This is this is not an easy alt gauntlet. I thought it wouldn't be too bad, but I I forgot that there's some pretty mean enemies in here. Um, Sheep Launcher going back to doing those other checks. Um, probably still hoping there's a magma key out there so that he doesn't have to do that nasty, nasty gauntlet. He and, may actually uh, be doing a, um, a Lamia grind here on Mom Tordeals. Oh yeah, because he went up here already. So, speaking of the Lamias, yes, their uh, Siren at the top of the mountain will summon two Lamias. Um, which are weak to fire, they're weak to cure, because they're undead. And yeah, he that's exactly what he's doing. Um, this used to be a more popular grind, but uh, I think it's been supplanted by other faster grinds. But in this case, it's the grind we have access to. And these give pretty good experience. Uh... I'm trying to... It's been so long, I don't exactly remember how much experience it is. It is about 5,000. Ooh, and um, things oh, kind no. of are shaped. Oh, that sorcerer can summon a couple of different monsters. Uh, the green dragon is both the rarest and the hardest. Oh, oh heartbreak broken. So close. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was the last fight, too. It was very close. I don't actually know if Imperial Dragon has coffins, but those, uh, those summoner-type enemies are not immune to instant death. Well, and it may be worth it to take a few fights and get Palum to Quake. He is very close. He is, and that AOA damage, the super quick spell casting, that would help a lot here. Um, just the random encounters around this location actually give decent experience. Uh, the one negative is they're a little slow. But I think we've all done the grind of shame here in the Tower of Babel. <laughs> At least once, yeah. So, uh, uh, Scala, <laughs> giving us the troll seed we were promised. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, these two runners met in the first group round, and uh, Scala rolled them a, a two and a half hour seed. And uh, it looks like she is not making it easy for them again today. 
I am being corrected, a two hour and 45 minute-ish scene, so 15 minutes more than I thought. That doesn't make it better, that makes it worse! And encountering a summoner, summoner list, summoner list, a summoner list green dragon, which is great for experience, um, but also a little bit difficult, but getting through that just fine. And no quake yet, though, that I saw. Yep, only getting one level on Palum, but still that much closer. Um, Inven, I believe they both have Mute Knights knives, but I am not 100% sure on that. And getting another egg, who will likely be another dragon. But that stop spell is going to help a lot because that does stop the egg from hatching. Um, and eggs are pretty, pretty helpless until they hatch. They're just sitting there being eggy. Yep, definitely a great use of the stop spell. Which Palem learns uh, pretty early. Yeah, six levels on Rosa there. She's going to be actually usable now. Which, it looks like Imperial Dragon might give this another crack. That was an unintentional egg pun, because I wasn't even talking about the eggs. I was talking about the alt gauntlet, but the alt gauntlet also starts with an egg, so, so it was still an egg pun. Egg. Yep, looks like she's comfortable with her levels. Um, knows that she's got that Leviathan summon and has enough MP to cast it. Oh no, don't change out the mute knife. That's really good for those uh, mad ogres. Random trivia! Did you know that in Japanese the mad ogres are berserked ogres? That's why they have Bacchus wines as a sealable item. And also why they hit so hard because they're berserked. They're angie. They <laughs> yes, angie ogres. I love that. But learning some of the, or remembering some of the tricks she learned in her little mini grind, stopping the egg before it hatches into a mean old Lamia. Yep. Instant learning. That alone is going to help a lot. Now, this is the one where the mute knife would actually be better. Though the fact that the Mad Ogre is, is uh, a Berserker does not explain why it is uh, vulnerable to uh, mage, mage weapons. That is still an, an enigma. Because video games. Yes. You make an excellent argument. Yeah, and just those couple of extra levels. Uh, stopping that egg. This is going up much better for Imperial Dragon. Oh, Ninja Debugger with with a really great uh, lore explanation. Um, they're mages because they cast Berserk on themselves. That, yeah, I buy it. And now we see these balloons. And we are going to cast fire on them. Oh, they do have little arms. <laughs> Tiny little arms. 
That's- I guess they can, uh, give a makeup tutorial now. And Sheep Launcher has entered his alt gauntlet. a level or two behind Imperial Dragon, but already having a much better time of it. And we see the power of that mute knife. And Rydia has enough HP now to survive a few attacks, so she can actually survive long, long enough to uh, summon a Sea Serpent. Very helpful. Yep, um, very smart to wait till that exact encounter to use up their Leviathan. Um, definitely got through that much easier. And, uh, Sheep Launcher does have Quake on Pelham now, which is helping out a ton. So both our runners looking much, much better on this fight. And with that final stop spell, Imperial Dragon is through. It's an... Oh, no. Yeah, that's right. We still have a Mylon. <laughs> it's been so long, I forgot. But Mylon should not be very bad in this, uh, in this area, um, whether it's Mylon Z or Mylon and his zombie friends. Um, Pel Pelham has fire spells, uh... There's a bunch of undeadness going on, so you can use healing items or cure spells to do damage. Um, there's a lot of ways around either Mylon fight. Or you could just throw a angry uh, danger noodle at it. That is very true. Yep, and I think Mylon Z is actually... Yeah, I won't say that. That's not necessarily true. But yeah, you can cast fire, you can heal him for damage, you can just bop him on the head with some weapons. There's a lot of way around here. Or, like you suggested, we can just uh, summon all the raging powers of the ocean itself, if Rydia can stand up that long. Uh, did cast Quake, though. Funny thing, Mylon Z is a flying enemy. Yep, I like to imagine he's hovering just like a few millimeters off the ground so that he's the or he's uh technically flying. And unfortunately Sheep Launcher is in a bit of a pickle here. Oh, was doing so well too. through that fight, unfortunately doesn't know about stopping the eggs. But as long as he doesn't attack, um, should be okay to get his party up. Yep, you can take all the time you need here. Uh, this, this egg is not being incubated, it will not hatch on its own. It'll just sit there and be an egg. And Mylon, unfortunately knowing who can deal the big damage to him, has taken out both the small children. Rude. Because in the Final Fantasy IV world, uh, it is the, the small children that have the ultimate power. Kane is still doing pretty good damage, though, so... As long as we can keep people up here, we should be good. 
But, happy days. Sheep Launcher also threw the gauntlet. Um, is obviously going to go back and do a quick save. And then we'll also be in the Mylon Z fight. And Imperial Dragon getting the rare damaged by poison message popping up. And there we go. Imperial Dragon is finally through. And uh, over an hour into the seed, we will finally be in the underground. <laughs> you know that Scala rolled a difficult one uh, when we're an hour in and we don't have a single objective completed. Watch out for the- oh. That pitfall got him again. She should just jump over it. I know! And we get a peek at the top of the tower boss, and it looks to be Mylon and Friend. Nope. Yep, that I was Mylon and Friends look, uh, looking at Mylon Z. Okay, that was it. I wasn't sure because of the poison effect and how it makes the screen all wiggly. I had a bit of double vision there and I wasn't sure if I was seeing correctly. So thanks for catching that. And Sheep Launcher also going to find out the sad news about uh, floating Mylon. Yes. Oh, Mylon, please, rude. You had five targets there and you went for the one with the damage. It's only a 20% chance and you still did it. Looks like we found some illusions here in this shop. A nice item for um, when you're fighting a physical attacker. Yeah, especially if you have a physical attacker on the moon, those uh, those blink spells and those illusions are pretty much required. Which man, we have not seen any of the hard bosses. So you think about. All the bosses we've seen so far, and how many we have to go. We still haven't seen Vivalis, we haven't seen Golbez, we haven't seen Ogopogo, uh, we haven't seen Wyvern. Haven't seen Evil Wall, haven't seen Kainatso. I know, this is gonna be- oh, and we had a job dwarf check, Industrial Something Specialist. Thank you, Fluffy Muttons, Muttons, Fluffy Mittens, an industrial relations specialist. And it looks like Imperial is going to go ahead and check all of her freebies. Uh, not a bad idea. Uh, of course, we have the unguarded chest down here in the Fey Marsh. We also picked up that pan in the overworld, so we can go run to the Sylphs, uh, use that pan on Yang. The Sylphs will give us a key item check, and then Sheila will give us two key item checks. Imperial Dragon running into the trap chest right away. Uh, well, now you know which one it is, so you can open every single other chest. And uh, the chests in here have a pretty high loot value, so you can get some really good stuff. Oh my gosh, the flashing effects. I'm sorry, I literally have to look away from the screen for a minute, so I'm gonna leave it to you. <laughs> um, so... Both of our runners uh, have made it underground. Sheep Launcher is getting in his uh, falcon. Okay, it looks like it's better now. 
I'm really uh, sensitive to the flash effects, which one nice thing about this randomizer, which I have to plug every time I commentate, uh, there's a quality of life feature. You can turn the flashing effects off, and that makes me so happy. Yep, it's a great little feature that Board put in for us, um, and just super great for anybody who's photosensitive. Um, yeah, and it is race legal. Yep, it doesn't affect the timing in any way. And I am thankful for it because I am one of those people. Uh, I don't have severe reactions, but I do get those flashing effects make me nauseous. So I use the, the ever since it uh, became a feature, I've used that turn flashes off every time. And our free item is a pink tail. Um, it's not progress, and we have adamant armors are turned off for the group rounds. So uh, you will not get an adamant armor from turning in the pink tail, but you will get a top tier item. Um, the tier seven items, which are the best items in the game. Randomly selected, but if it's uh, something your party can use, it can be very useful. Yep, definitely uh, a nice thing. And since they finished the hook route, there's no punishment if they move that uh, hovercraft. Yep, yep. And we'll see if Imperial Dragon peaks the bosses down here or a uh, sheep launcher, because they're basically in the same spot. Or if, yep, looks like we're going to get a preview of the bosses down here. Always exciting. And we have a Dark Knight Cecil. Ooh, that's gonna do some damage. Imperial Dragon trying it out. I feel like, uh, I'm trying to remember if this is, well, we're just gonna see. Yeah, that's, that's an ouchies. I thought that was gonna be an ouchies and it was an ouchies. And then the other one was Mom Bomb, I believe. Yep, Mom Bomb also, not fun down here. Yeah, for sure. Um, so once again, we saw all those easy bosses early, and now that's sort of coming home to roost. We're seeing all these difficult bosses in the difficult spots. But we do have a few more free checks first, um, and those are from the Sylphs and from Sheila. And now, yep, our, go ahead. I was going to say, now technically, we could get all three of our necessary key items right here. That is 100% true. Sorry, young ouchers. And the Sylph's giving us a Luka key. Um, that is not super helpful because, uh, if you don't know, for this round we have the Dwarf Castle Warp glitch turned on. Um, Actually, it is very super helpful, as that is our fourth objective. You are right! I, it's, been, it's been a full hour, and I have a terrible short-term memory. You are right! It is an objective item. I was so, so wrong. Thank you for correcting me. Now, if I have commentary cursed our runners by all three of the key items being here, um, I expect cookies and payment. <laughs> Ooh, cookies. Now I want cookies. Mm. What's your favorite kind of cookie? Um, I would say... A my cat just fell off the desk onto my lap. <laughs> oh no! Is Kitty okay? Oh, she's fine. She just dug claws into my leg. My favorite kind of cookie is probably peanut butter. Mm, a good choice, but I'm kind of a boring person. I gotta go with the classic Toll House chocolate chip. Those are <laughs> also excellent. Uh, Princess Luca being extremely rude and, and snuggling herself in that hallway to keep us from visiting her father. 
Ooh, there's some some uh, very heated debate about raisins and cookies <laughs> in chat right now. Oh, she finally remembered the 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 mist dragon! Yay! And he will get his legend sword very shortly. That's got to make you feel behind, though. When you're like, oh, I forgot this check forever ago. And Plague. Um, this is not too bad of a, a boss for this spot. Um, there are several ways around his count spell. Um, if you're super fast and can get some sort of reflect on one of your characters before the count spell, um, he will get very confused and just count... Uh, use the count spell forever, refreshing it every time. There is the death and resurrection strat, which it looks like that is what Imperial Dragon is doing. Um, when you kill a character, the count goes away, you revive them, and the count is not there anymore. Plague gets very angry about this and recasts count, refreshing the timer. And that pink tail giving us an Avenger. Ooh, uh, we do have a cane, so that is useful. Imperial getting through that fight, but only has two characters up. Um, could get a third character here, depending on who we see come through the door at the dramatically correct moment. It's another Yawn. Probably won't take that. Nope. Bye, Yawn. And a Bygen here with only two characters up is a little risky. Um, this spot doesn't have much HP, um, but those arms are pretty, pretty fast. We'll see if... Oh, and I should be looking at Sheila right now. We have an adamant and, and an edge of the moon. Eh? So two out of three of the objectives from that pan. Ooh, an Imperial's a little sketchy on this bike in here. I think she can do it. Yep, as, as long as this explode. This is gonna be close! Whew! Made it. I was afraid that explode was gonna finish her off. So we will get two checks here. We will get to check the item at the bottom of the Luca cave, um, because the dwarf warp glitch is turned on. And we will also get to see what Luca is wearing around her neck today. You would be uh, very surprised at the strange trends in, in Dwarven fashion. I always like it when she has a giant holy sword around her neck. <laughs> I think when it's one of the, the tails, it's kind of icky. Like, ew, just wearing a tail. It's gotta be slimy. That thing has not been connected to an animal for a while. A darkness crystal! Hoo boy! Well, that is definitely required. Yep, that gives us a way to Zeromus, uh, at the very least. And don't- oh, yep. I, I was about to say something, but it was factually incorrect, so I stopped myself at the last moment. And she bopped through that text box so fast I missed it. Did you catch it? It was a barren key. Ooh. This race is heating up. And with that... I believe we have two out of three, or two of our objectives completed on Sheep Launcher's side. Yep, uh, he's probably gonna go forge that sword to com- well, he did already. Um, forge that sword to complete objective one. 
uh, unlocked to complete objective four. So now we're just looking for either an earth crystal or a package. And there are a lot of places those could be. We have, of course, know where uh, we have a darkness crystal. So the package or the earth crystal could be anywhere on the moon. Um, we got the five altars and the Bahamut spot up there. Um, we still have the top of the tower open to us. Uh, we just got that Baron key that opens up two key item checks. Uh, one for the false throne, uh, the false king at the the top of Baron Castle, and the other uh, the true king at the bottom of Baron Basement. Um, so we got we got a lot of ground to cover right now. Yep, um, we'll have to see where these runners decide they want to go next. And it looks like, unsurprisingly, Sheep Launcher having that warp spell is going to do the Dwarf Castle checks pretty shortly here, and will also have his Darkness Crystal. Then after that, I really think it's going to be whoever finds one of those two key items first is going to have a big advantage. So it's just who checks what spots in what order. Um, which I think is going to make for an extremely exciting race. Now, where would you go next if you were these runners? Um... I would probably go to the moon. I know we still have the two fit- well... No, I'd probably do Baron because it's two checks. Um, the first check does take a little bit of time, but it's not particularly difficult uh, at this point because our characters are level so high. And uh, Odin's not a particularly long check either. At least peek in and see if that Odin spot is uh, something you can think you can do at this point. What would you do? Um, definitely probably check out that Baron spot. Um, moon's scary. <laughs> yes, that is extremely true. Um, if you're feeling super frisky, uh, you might check the top of the tower. We just know it's we know it's a Mylon and friends, so we know that's gonna be a relatively fight fast fast fight. Sorry, dyslexia. Um, that is going to be a relatively fast fight. And uh but it does take a little bit of time to walk all the way to the top, and without the tower key, you're not going to get the double dip. Um, Imperial going to go check on those Sheila items, or not. Imperial going to go check on those Sheila items. Yep, um, may have just saved outside so that if it's trash, don't have to walk down the tower. That's exactly it. It was just really funny timing. But uh, she's going to get her adamant, which means she's going to be forging her sword pretty pretty shortly here. Oh, did she, she forgot to put the pan in. Uh, we know that's not going to be a big deal. But uh, I think just got super excited when she saw the adamant there. But it's just a pink tail. The Avenger's nice, but it's in no way required, so. Oh, did she trade Pan? Yep, she did. Okay. I was wrong. I'm a professional. I'm not actually a professional. But we see Sheep Launcher taking on this Bygan. Um manages to get Quake off, which just takes Bygan down straight off. Yep, uh, that was a much, much faster Bygan fight. Um, due in largely to the fact that uh, he didn't lose as many characters in the first fight. Yes, as, as Groundflyer mentions in chat, this is a very close race right now. And it looks like Imperial Dragon gonna follow up on that Baron Key. Don't blame her. Moon's scary. Skull Moon's 
extra scary. <laughs> especially, especially when you think about how many difficult bosses we haven't seen yet. Moon's not going to just be scary, regular scary. It's going to be extra scary. We're going to need some illusions because, man, we haven't seen Antlion. <laughs> we haven't seen Vale. We haven't seen Ogopogo. I'm hoping for Evil Wall at... No, wait. Evil, Evil Wall Wall's in Baron. That's, That's the one right. we I was hoping for Evil Wall at the Ribbon Room. Yeah, that's I've had that one. That is that is not a pretty fight. Yes, we are about to visit uh, Evil Wall. Um, they have risen through the ranks of the Baron Guard, and uh, uh, now a Wall is is the captain of the Baron Guard. But Evil Wall gonna get the bad news that when a Quake Quake versus Wall, Quake usually wins. Very true. But Sheep Launcher has gotten his Darkness Crystal. And we'll see if he wants to go ahead and take out Baron, or if he's going to go ahead and head up to the moon. Yeah, and at these levels, this evil wall should be no problem at all. Oh, did Sheep Launcher... Sheep Launcher never finished music, so heading back to that spot. Ah, yes, that's right. It was those mean, mean lunar dragons. But, you know what? It's Stardust Rod? Uh, I, I was gonna say we get to hear more music, but... It is- that is also factually correct. And Imperial Dragon picking up the best spear in the game. And looks like... Oh, is gonna go ahead and take on the king first before checking out that Odin spot. Yep, so who is the false king of Baron today? Baron has been overtaken by a Vavellus. The king of Baron is now a queen of Baron. And it is tornado time. Luckily, we have a cane, so this fight is going to be way easier than it would be otherwise. And we are quite well leveled, so uh, Vail can definitely cause some trouble, but uh, I don't think she'll be causing as much trouble today. But we see that virus spell miss um, when Vivellus is in her, her tornado form. Her magic defense and magic evade go sky high. But we have a cane who can do a little twirl and take her out of that form. And she's gone. Yep. Unfortunately, the Queen of Baron is no more. <laughs> Commander Leonhart making me chuckle. And an edge! Do you take another edge at this point? I'm tempted. Absolutely not. I take his stuff. Yeah, I would have taken his stuff too. He has really great stuff. But that black belt looks great on anybody. Absolutely. 
Sheep launcher discovering how high the magic defense is here. Those uh, that quake spell uh, causing a pair of single dim digit damages. Even Leviathan only coming through with about 1k. But with his partner gone, the 1D Lunar is not going to be a struggle. Ooh, and we get a pass. Uh, so if this Odin has our go mode, uh, we do not have to go to the moon. Yep, and even if um, even if our objectives are found on the moon, since everything has to come back down to Earth, um, we should not have to do the lunar walk. Yep, you are always happy to see that pass. And Sheep Launcher doing what I've done on more than one occasion and forgetting to get the item. Yep, I have exited out of this cave before um, without grabbing the item. And we get a Lunar Sparkle, and it is... Hail Dim. Um, his physical attacks are going to hurt pretty good here, but this is a very doable fight. Yep. Um, out of the remaining Lunar bosses, this is definitely who you want to see. That's interesting. I don't think I've seen anyone do that before. Looks like he, um, looks like they did. Looks like Imperial Dragon wants to go ahead and reflect spells onto this, uh, Pale Dim. Um, um, yeah. Because he does do the... Doesn't he has a magic counter, but uh, remind me what it is. I know it's really nasty for Quake. Yeah, I. Or maybe he casts Quake if you do something to him. I know he doesn't like summons either. I just always remember you want to mostly do physical attacks on him. Ah, Quake is the summon counter. So we will not be seeing Leviathan today. At least not without a float first. See, I would be looking forward to dueling quakes. But with that last hit, Imperial Dragon has taken down this Pale Dim. Just a Bahamut summon. Uh, I say just a Bahamut summon, but we have Iridia, so that is extremely useful. And in, on a, in our upcoming moon fights, it will be invaluable. But it is not the go mode we are looking for. And correct me if I'm wrong, um, I do believe that means all we have left is the moon and the Feymarsh bosses, but mostly the moon. And a keyless tower. A and the moon. And the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going to be keyless tower now. <laughs> Thanks for the moral support, Scala. And Imperial, um, kind of going through the same thought process that we're going through. Well, what's left? Well, what do I really want to do?
But I think Imperial Dragon is going to the moon. The moon. Now, where do you go on the moon? Oh, I'm one of those people who always does the value cave first. I, I always go straight to Cave Bahamut, but that's just my personal routing. I think for me, it really depends on um, who my opponent is and if I feel behind or not. If I'm facing somebody that I know is far better than me, I'm going to do all the outlier checks. Value cave, go top down. And Sheep Launcher also not wanting that edge. Well, it's an hour and a half into the seed, and we're finally going to space. Uh, Imperial gonna do a quick check, see what the cute little bunnies have for sale today. The cute little bunnies are selling coffins. How unthematic. So really, it is now the hunt for go mode. A package will get us into go mode. A earth crystal will get us into go mode. Who is going to find one of those items first? It is up in the air. This is yep. an extremely close race, and it is anybody's game at this time. Absolutely. Um... And since there are two ways to uh, finish the seed, um, both runners could take a different route and still get um, get to Zeromus around the same time. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be a fun finish. And we will see who is the king of all summons today. I hope it's an antlion. Yeah, that would be rude. This spot has is really fast and has ridiculously high physical attack. It is the good doctor. Um, this is very doable. Um, a lot of the... Uh, there are some physical attacks here, and those are gonna hurt. And there are some... Uh, there is one attack that is based on the doctor's HP. But the nice thing is that really high HP total is going to be divided between three fights. And um, a lot of the attacks are either status stuff, just uh, making you poisoned, making you unpoisoned. I, I don't know, he he's really weird. Or they're based on your HP. So this is an extremely doable fight. Yep. Um, he is really not a threat here. Of all the, sp the fights that we have left that could have been here, this is, this is one of the easier ones for sure. Oh, and Sheep Launcher finding out what happens, um, when you hit Pale Dim with a spell. Oof. That's uh, unfortunate. That's going to put him a little bit behind here. Meanwhile, this uh, this Dr. Luges uh, fight is going extremely well for Imperial Dragon. Um, he also is one of the many, many bosses weak to the lit element as well. Yep. Um, or just throwing Leviathan at him. That works too. 
has other fun weaknesses. Uh, his final form here is technically a machine type, so uh, hammers do extra damage. Which I think canonically makes it so that Dr. Luge is a robot who made another robot. So Dr. Luge is the beginning of a singularity? I, I think so. Perhaps that explains his eccentricities. That's a scary thought. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on that very long. But Sheep Launcher going ahead and giving this Pale Dem spot another or Pale Dem another shot. And we are through the doctor. So let's see what we get. Is it go mode? It is not go mode. It is just a, a very uh, durable helmet made of glass. I don't understand that. But knowing what bosses we have left, that glass hat can come in serious, um, can be seriously helpful. Yep, the glass hat, uh, all joking aside, the glass hat or the glass mask in later versions has extremely high physical defense. So if we find an antlion, um, if we want to take on that mom bomb in the Fey Marsh and ooh, quaked again. Um, Sheep Launcher unfortunately getting first-hand experience for that, uh, of that uh, summon counter. And looks like is going to give up for the time being. And we know that that's probably the best, uh, best idea, as it is only a Bahamut summon and not progression. Yep. Oh, maybe gonna take the Cecil? Yes, Sheep Launcher is gonna take the Cecil. We did get that Excalibur from forging, uh, forging the Legend Sword with the Adamant. So this is not a terrible move here. By Kevin, who is actually Sid. And meanwhile, on the Lunar Throne, we also have a Cecil. Um, Imperial Dragon has been quick to ditch, ditch the Cecils thus far. Is she going to keep this one and use the Excalibur or just going to chuck him again? And chucked. And does remember to use that Bahamut summon. Definitely going to be a big help on some of these bosses down here. For sure. And she gets a pretty tiara. I want a pretty tiara. Yeah, I don't actually know what Sheep's uh, uh, naming theme is, so if anyone can clue me in on that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you, uh, 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 Scala Kitty, for the, for the beautiful tiara. But it looks like Imperial Dragon is going to go with the more dense item checks and starts heading straight down. Yep. Are you a, a start at the top and go down or start at the bottom and go up person? Depends on if I feel behind. If yeah, I feel like I played well, I'll start at the bottom, but if I feel like I'm behind and I need a gamble, I'll start at the top. Yeah, me too, especially when it's I'm one item away. That's the wrong way. I do that one all the time. <laughs> I'm feeling Imperial on that because that's probably my most common wrong door. <laughs> Sometimes that you're just on muscle memory and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know where I am. I know. But 
let's see what rude bosses are here in the underground. Yep, and looks like sheep's just gonna do their grind now. Scramble in some eggs. Ooh, this one's not too bad, actually. Yep, this one is pretty much free. Yes, I do think Bahamut's going to be hitting themselves uh, really quick here. But we got plenty of Star Veils, Rydia Nose Wall. Those Mega Nukes are going to go right back in Bahamut's face, um, in addition to extra Mega Nukes provided by Rydia. And we see some max damage there. Dragon goes rare. And uh, 7,000 is nothing to scoff at either. Ooh. And Launcher is giving us a top of tower check. I know, I'm excited. This could be a big deal. If there is a package up here, or an earth crystal up here. That That is huge. Uh, just an Artemis bow from our dragon friendo today, though. Um, once again, uh, hi keep keep your friends close and, and your type weaknesses closer. The Artemis bow being super effective against dragons. But it is time for a zombie dance party. Rude. <laughs> oh my. Mega Nuke, directly to the face. We are dead. And this spot is especially rude for, me uh, for Wyvern. Yeah, it is a super fast spot. And un unsurprisingly, Imperial Dragon being like, eh, not going to do that right now. And is gonna go check this spot uh, in the in the crystally underground. And what do we got? Dark imps. Now, normally dark imps uh, not too bad, but they are gonna they are gonna hurt. But we have coffins. And coffins are great. And we have life potions to get double the experience. Coffins only being great because these dark imps do not have the boss bit. Um, the boss bit makes you immune to certain um, certain uh, instant death and it also makes you immune to the weak spell. But uh, Dark Imps, they don't have any of that. They are just minions. And with that, we see a bunch of levels on all of her characters. And the Dark Imps are down. And just a white shirt, so still no go mode. But we're gonna see what Sheep Launcher gets. And a Murasame, so still no go mode. Where's the go mode? It's probably behind Wyvern. Um, so what do we got left? We got Wyvern. We got the middle of the lunar subterrain. Um, we got the top of the lunar subterrain. We got the two Feymarsh bosses. And is there anything else? I think that's it. I 
think that's it. Uh, but, well, we got a, finally got a break in the action here. I've been meaning to plug this for a while, but there is, it, this has been a really exciting race. Um, there are three other races today. This is only the first of four total races. Oh, and I'm not going to get a chance to plug that because we're going right, right back into Wyvern. Um, we have completely rearranged our agility. And there's the Star Veil, so we will survive the Mega Nuke. But the thing is here, we get one shot um, while Wyvern's casting Wall. Um, but then he will start throwing out the nukes. And unfortunately, uh, miss menuing there, throwing the life potion on edge. Um, so we will have to try again. Okay, now I have time to plug the other races. <laughs> At 5 p.m. tonight, right here on the Free Enterprise channel, we will have Beer Nerd versus Starman Random. At 7 p.m., over on our partner channel, RPG Limit Break, we will have Chaos Shades versus McBain. And at 8 p.m., back here on the Free Enterprise channel, we will have RN Castro versus Karox. So if you are a Free Enterprise fan, there are a bunch of great races today. Yes, that's you. I see you in chat. I hope I pronounced your name right. But we see Imperial Dragon gonna go ahead and give the Wyvern spot a try. And Odin. Ooh, still not easy. Yeah, gonna hit a little hard and gonna be kind of fast here. Yeah, it's the fast I'm worried about. Oh, he's up to his- he's lifting his sword already. Thankfully, the magic in this spot is very low. Yeah, this- So, may survive the Odin. That is true. Yeah, not bad at all. Woo! But those physical attacks, still pretty nasty. Yay! That went much better than I was expecting. like he just dropped his sword at the last minute there. And speaking of swords, we find a crystal sword. Um, uh, we don't have a Cecil, so that's not super useful. Edge cannot even throw it for whatever reason. Um, so the spots this can be are dwindling. Now, Imperial Dragon does still have a backup Cecil in Kaipo. Oh, that is true. But then again, she's been rejecting the Cecils pretty thoroughly, so uh, I don't see her picking him up. But, you know, I've been proven wrong before. So we are down to the vanilla uh, Muras yes, Murasame spot um, and the two bar bosses in the Fey Marsh. So, uh, not a lot of places left this could be. Yeah, we are quickly losing, um, key item spots. And I wonder if it's going to be just a very long chain. Oh yes, and also Wyvern. I think our runners would very much like to forget about Wyvern. And thank the Hummingways, because they gave us coffins. Yeah, you know it's been a good race when it's been... It was an hour and 40 before I got a chance to plug the other races today. Yeah, this has been a great race. Um, our runners have done an excellent job. 
um, definitely give them a follow. Yes, yeah, Scala was uh, not nice with their either of their seeds. Ooh, a protectoring is nice, but guess what? Not progress. So we are down to three spots now. Um, Imperial Dragon, of course, has not done the top of the tower. Yep. We'll see if she goes ahead and... Looks like she may be looking to... Um, looking to head back down and give that Wyvern another shot. Yep, using the... Uh, warp spell, normally we see the warp spell to go back up, but in this case, you can use the warp spell to uh, go back down. I phrased that completely backwards. Nope. Heading out. Heading oh. out. Oh. Um, Imperial Dragon doesn't have any exits. Oh, no. So we'll see if... Yep, she's going back to Earth. So she hasn't done top of tower, so I wouldn't be surprised if she goes and does that. But we also have those two bosses in the land of the summoned monsters that have been uh, just sitting there hanging out until now. And looks like trying to think of what the next best bet is. NPC, please. Please, we just want to go visit the item shop. Such rude NPCs. Ugh, I know. I mean... <laughs> and again! Wow, man in the blue shirt for the win! I mean, in his defense, we just uh, barged into his quiet town and are blustering about running around. Whereas he is just peacefully taking a walk in his own village. So that Imperial, looks... uh, finally coming back to forge that sword. Let's see if Sheep Launcher takes a second Cecil. That would solve the agility problems. No. That is a very nice uh, uh, cocoa shop filled with crystal rings, but uh, money. Money is a thing. Yeah, this has been a very poor seed. Or Scala Kitty uh, not taking it easy on these two particular runners this entire tournament. Rolling the hard seeds. We joke, it's all random. In case you're a new person, uh, Scala didn't actually set up, it's random. But she does have it seems, a high probability of rolling difficult seeds. There's a reason we have the phrase, the Scala Kitty classic. It looks like Imperial is going to try the top of tower. Um, only going to find trash up there. To answer the question in chat, we found a lot of equipment and not a lot of key items. Uh, Moon may not be haunted. Uh, Imperial did not finish out that Wyvern fight. No, we have not checked the Feymarch bosses yet. 
Uh, the only three spots that we as viewers do not have knowledge of are the two bosses in the land of the summoned monsters and whatever is sitting behind Wyvern. Three spots? We know two of them have go mode. Because either a package or an earth crystal will put us into go mode. So by that logic, we actually know that one of the two Feymarsh bosses has something that will put us into go mode, and Mega Newt to the face, dead. Yep, I think um, for us to take on that Wyvern, our runners are going to have to kind of manipulate their agility a little bit. Oh, Commander Leonhardt making a great point. Uh, Wyvern is guarding two chests that could possibly be having items, so that Wyvern could be holding both the items we need for go mode. And that would be rude. But we see Sheep Launcher taking down this um, Bahamut. I think this is where we got the crystal sword. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. No, this was the Artemis bow. Crystal sword yes, was yes, uh, right. Dark Imps. It's been a two-hour seed. I'm losing track of things. <laughs> and Imperial Dragon not even wanting that edge sword. I do not blame her. But I'm hoping she will go to the land of the summoned monsters, check on the king and queen. I would like to also mention, uh, this is my meme, that whoever is in the Leviathan spot is canonically married to whoever is in the Ashura spot. So we have a marriage of Dark Knight Cecil and Mom Bomb. Yes. I want Rosa knows. <laughs> right they're gonna have so many babies at least uh at least six of them <laughs> asen with that's an explosive relationship But we see Sheep Launcher has also found the Dark Imps and has coffins to go with it. Yep. Blessed by the humming waves with coffins to defeat our enemies. If you have a free Enterprise subscription, get out your bless emotes, for the humming waves have blessed us today. But we have much more HP to uh, to face this Dark Knight. Uh, Arcane here has 3,000, which is almost enough to get through it on his own. Um, he probably might need a top off, but uh, that's about it. Oh, maybe. Oh, it's gonna be a roll. Oh, just barely making it. Ooh, that was roll dependent there. That was a close one. That made my heart skip a beat. And a coffin. So uh, Dark Knight Cecil in league with the Humming Ways today, but we still have a bomb mom. Imperial Dragon saying, I don't need these levels. 
Uh, it's going to be faster for me to reset than it is to walk all the way back up to heal. Yep, and we'll likely give that mom bomb a shot. And this Odin being extra rude. It is. This is not an easy fight. Uh, luckily, we know that this uh, this uh, Odin spell. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Sen Sensuken. Sure. Uh, it. <laughs> I know it ends in Ken because Ken means sword. Uh, I just call it Odin. <laughs> It does not hurt very much because the magic attack in this spot is very low, but the physical attack very high. <laughs> Thanks, Gundam Pilot. <laughs> that is extremely helpful. But Sheep Launcher is through Odin. And we'll see um, what he decides to do from here. That's where the crystal sword was. And does decide he wants to hold on to that. A very nice pickup. Yep, because he actually did keep that Cecil. Dragon go rawr, which will help get through this mom bomb. That's the sound I hear every time that uh, Bahamut opens its mouth, by the way. Rawr. I hear blood. <laughs> and go mode! We've finally done it! We're two hours and five minutes in, and we can finally go fight Saromis! Sorry if that was too loud, I just got really excited. I'm sure Imperial also yelled a little bit. Yes, uh... I'm not even gonna try to read that username. D with a bunch of numbers says Moon is, is correct. Moon was haunted all along. And Sheep Launcher trying to head back out of the Lunar Subterrain, which is quite a bit harder to go back than it is to come down. And to answer uh, Chowmel's question in uh, chat, um, in the vanilla game, Rosa does not learn exit until you complete the Tower of Zot. And uh, that behavior is carried over to the randomizer. But, while I finally have a minute or two here, I would like to thank everyone who helped put on such a wonderful restream today. Of course, there's my co-commentator, Ellie. Um, in the background, we got Scala Kitty doing the restream. We got Moonblaze Wolf uh, doing the tracking, lighting up all the buttons. Uh, thank everyone so much. Uh, I know I have a ton of fun watching these restreams, so I'm so happy that everyone works to put them on. And I also want to give a one plug. Uh, right now there is a charity marathon going on on Twitch right now called Midwest Speed Fest. And if you are a fan of the Free Enterprise Randomizer, they are going to run uh, a race of Free Enterprise on that marathon Sunday morning. It is going to be two of our regular races, Gambit versus Bahamut X. And uh, I, I got, I heard a rumor 
that there might be some uh, new songs and or Z sprites for that marathon. It's it's just a rumor. Have not confirmed. And uh, uh, Shala, Scala telling me here that you'll actually be able to bid on which uh, new new things we get to see. So uh, please go check that out. They are supporting Abled Gamers, which is a charity that is near and dear to my heart um, that helps connect people with disabilities to uh, gaming equipment that they can use to, to enjoy video games. So check it out. And on that same vein, we also have Powerhouse August going on on Sunday afternoon. And I believe the runners for that are... Uh, Ground Flyer and Pixel Tamer. Neat. I, I agree, agree with uh, Jay Bruin in chat. Never enough uh, free enterprise. Never. But anyway, Imperial Dragon opening up the treasury. Uh, getting her crystal. Looks like she's going to check for any good loot down here before she leaves. You might as well. You walked all the way down here to get the crystal. Stardust Rod. So everyone, it's time to play our favorite new game, Rate the Treasury. Ooh, life. Life is nice. That'll be a good weapon for Rosa. AU Apple helps helps our mages survive a little bit. Just deciding what to give up. <laughs> and a lip bolt. Uh, not the best. Uh, there wasn't any like protector crystal. There wasn't any truly good weapons. So I, I'm gonna give that like a three out of ten. I don't know. A stardust rod does work for our mages. I would say that, but I think we've already picked up a few. I think that's our third Stardust Rod. I think it's only our second for Imperial Dragon. Okay, then I revise to a 5 out of 10. And we did get a Dragoon Spear for our um, cane, so a nice weapon there. Oh, okay, 6 out of 10. And poor Imperial Dragon fighting the inventory boss. Why can't I hold all these things? Well, you could use the whistle and call the fat chocobo. <laughs> well, he is very cute, but uh, not very speedy. Sing the song of Scala's people. Sheep Launcher has headed back down to Earth. Hopefully going to go ahead and check those two Fae March locations. That would put us pretty close here. Yeah, that, that Dragoon Spear is quite an upgrade over the, uh, the Gunner Spear we had. And it looks like Imperial Dragon is ready for their Z fight. Ooh, maybe not. Wait. But um, I keep seeing these flags in chat. Would you care to explain? Why, I would love to explain. So Zeromus is a very complicated boss. And because of this, we can't randomize him to a different location. Um, if you got something like a Big Bang at, uh, at the Antlion Cave, that just would not be fair. So rather than randomizing his location, we randomize his appearance. We have over 450 different sprites, a large majority of which were made by our restreamer today, Scala Kitty. And uh, they are from all across all different fandoms. Uh, we have Disney characters, we have other Final Fantasy characters, we have memes. So many memes. Oh my goodness, the memes. 
Um, but so you never quite know uh, who you're going to get, which leads to a very important question, which I will let you ask. So chat, whose butt are we going to kick today? I, of course, being a rhythm, rhythm gamer, I always hope for theater rhythmus. Kujamas, that would be fun. So I have a new favorite from yesterday's race. But uh, let's let's not spoil. But my other favorite is Clippiness. <laughs> Clippiness is really good. I've gotten that one a few times. Crystal go out. It's Wily Mus. Oh, that's a good one. So if we are kicking the Wily Miss butt, are we kicking the butt of Dr. Wily or the butt of the ship? And what would the butt of the ship even be? Ooh, direct nuke uh, for the nerf. No, never mind, that was reflected. I got distracted thinking about where the butt of the ship would be. Ooh, and Rydia's taking that counter nuke like a champ. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Sheep Launcher, not that far behind, is fighting Mom Bomb. And if he gets through this fight, he will also be in go mode. And we will see. And looks like we're getting it fixed. Yep, we are working on Imperial Stream right now. Uh, yes, like uh, Ventasu <laughs> says in chat, uh, Stream took a counter nuke. Uh, meanwhile, Sheep Launcher throwing all the raging power of the sea at one bomb. Um, unfortunately, if you target onto the exploding bomb, um, and the bomb explodes before your attack goes off, uh, you will still have a single target and not a multi-target. Oh, and I think we got Imperial Dragon back, so yay. Yep, and looks like we may be going for Reflect Strats. It does look like that. Would you like to explain Reflect Strats and uh, why they're so speedy? Sure. So... Zeromus typically has about 120 or so thousand health, but the Super Nintendo doesn't do big numbers like that well. So what the developers did is when you're fighting Zeromus, when he's about halfway through, um, he does what we call an HP refill. But when you do reflected damage, that flag to refill the HP is never set. So you're really only chewing through about 65,000 HP versus 120,000. Yep, it lets you defeat Zeromus in uh, in about half the AD damage required. Unfortunately, that black hole coming out, getting rid of the Star Veil, but Star Veil's back up, and we will see some nukes coming out shortly. And 
and I do believe Sheep Launcher has gotten his Earth Crystal, but wants to buy a few more things. But yep. should be joining us um, in the Zoramas fight shortly. Yep, buying some Bacchuses for the final fight. Picking up a couple more sirens to grind. It did. So another technique for this fight, in case you're new, is uh, Zeromas does a little shake before his big bang. Um, if you time a spell, or if you cast a spell at him with good timing, between the time he shakes and the time the Big Bang goes off, it actually does what we call nerfing the Big Bang, and the Big Bang does much, much less damage. Um, that's a common technique for uh, getting low-level parties through this fight. Um, the disadvantage, though, is whenever you direct cast onto Zeronis, he will do a counter nuke, so you have to be prepared for that. Yep. Typically, the first nuke or the first nerf is free, but subsequent nukes you have to send it out at the right time, um, which is a lot more tricky. And we have finished. Um, due to some issues with the uh, with some little hiccups, we are using the official race bot time, which is two hours, eighteen minutes, and forty two seconds. Ooh, what a speed! Yeah, when the stream uh, buffers like that, it causes a little bit of desync. So, um, we will see if Imperial Dragon wants to come in for an interview. But in the meantime, GG, one win is huge in the hook route. Um, only a select few from the hook route are going to be able to advance into the table round, so any win you can get is huge. Yep, um, only two runners from the hook route will advance to table stages, so... It's going to be pretty cutthroat. But with that, I do believe we are joined by Imperial Dragon. GG's. Thank you. That was certainly a race. Not a bad seed once I got over my nerves, though. Yeah, so do you regret letting uh, Scala roll a seed for you again? To be honest, not really. That was actually fun. Oh, cool. <laughs> How about that wyvern? Yeah, that wyvern can just go away. I hate that boss in that spot. I looked at it, I decided, okay, let's see. If both parts of go mode I'm missing are in there, or both options for go mode are missing that I'm in, are in there, uh, I'm probably gonna lose this, but let's just skip it. Yeah, it paid off for you today. When you found uh, go mode behind the Land of Summon Monsters bosses, did you feel behind at that point? I felt a little behind, but I, it was more, I just looked at it and I'm just like, you know, that's a boss, or that's a boss set that I usually do avoid, so I was just gambling on, or when I, at that point I figured I'm gambling on whether or not shape hits that spot. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I just happened to win on that gamble. Yep, Moon was haunted in the end. Um, so congratulations on your win. That's got to feel good having a win under your belt, knowing that you need uh, you need multiple wins to move on. It does feel nice to have that win under my belt. 
I'm not 100% optimistic I'm gonna make it on, but I'm trying. Well, and as long as you're having fun, that's the most important thing. And I certainly am having fun. I'm curious to see where the uh, where the package ended up being as well. Because some people in chat were hoping for a chain from the Earth Crystal that gated the package. If that was the case, then Mom Bomb was literally the only progression. Oh, it looks like package. Where is that? That is. That is Tower of Zot. Mom yeah, Bomb is. only progression. That is interesting to know. Uh, so any final thoughts here? Uh, Imperial not, Dragon? Not really, other than thank you to the restream team, kind and nerdy housewife, Alice, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Shala, and, uh, I'm sorry, I can't, or I'm not sure which person Moonblaze Wolf. <laughs> thank That's you right. as well, Moonblaze. Well, thank you so much, and we will see you next time. See ya. Okay, and meanwhile, while the interview is happening, we got Sheep Launcher in his Zeromus fight actually really close behind. This was, uh, this was a close race. Yep, and got his Cecil pretty well leveled up. Um, I didn't see if he got his Rydia to nuke. Uh, yeah, I didn't see either. Her HP total would make me think not, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And the common opening, uh, Silkweb slows Romus down. So yeah, that was fun. From the spoiler log, we can see that Mom Bomb was the only way. Yep, that was that would have been exceptionally rude if that uh, Earth Crystal had been behind that Wyvern. Yeah, um, I'm sure both of our runners extremely happy that that Wyvern was not required. It looks like we're going to get a little bit of a different strategy here from Sheep Launcher. Looks like we're going to get a hybrid strat. Yep, so Zeromus will refill his HP, um, but with those powerful melee fighters, both uh, both Crystal Sword Cecil here and our Edge doing really good damage, um, it's probably the right call. And Rydia does have nuke. Yeah, she just does not gain the uh, the HP that her companions do. No, it's one of the things that doesn't make her very endgame viable in this randomizer. She just has really, really low HP growth. But look at all those nukes! Just pouring out the damage. 4,000 from Edge, 6,000 from Cecil, nukes going everywhere. Uh, I don't think we're going to see too much trouble with this fight. Yep, I don't think that Wily Miss is going to be long for this world. Yep, and so while we're going through this fight, this will probably be my last chance. Uh, I would like to thank all the Restream team, uh, me, LSA, Moonblaze Wolf, Scala Kitty, Restream Team, you're awesome. Woo! Well, and thank you to my co commentator, Kinda Nerdy Housewife. Wait, that's me. It has been a pleasure. Um, also, we have three other races today 5 p.m. here, Beer Nerd vs. Starman Random. 7 p.m. over an RPG Limit Break channel, Chaos Shades vs. McBain. Then 8 p.m. right here on the Free Enterprise channel, RN Castro versus Caron. And also Midwest Speed Fest this weekend. 
Uh, I would also encourage you to go to the Discord. There are many races today that are not being restreamed because there are so many races, we cannot restream them all. But uh, links get regularly put in the Discord to all the races, even the ones that are not being restreamed. And with that, we see rocks over it sh on Sheep Launcher's side. So uh, this is going to be a close race. And uh, yep, and there we go. So GG to Sheep Launcher. We will see if he wants to do an interview today. And he has finished with an official time of 2 hours, 27 minutes, and 59 seconds. And oh. I believe we joined by Sheep Launcher, GG. Thank you, thank you very much. So, uh, how glad were you on a scale of 1 to 10 that uh, Wyvern was not required today? I'm very glad uh, that, yeah, that was one of the, one of the, I think, four um, uh, initial checks that I'm like, if, if, if one of these is required, I'm going to be a very sad uh, person, and that's why I left uh, Mom Bomb and DKC and Wyvern and failed him uh, to last uh, because I, I, yeah, I didn't want to uh, deal with any of those. <laughs> also, how do you feel about uh, uh, Skella rolling you super long seeds twice? <laughs> <laughs> this was so much better than the first one that had um, Ogopogo at uh, at hook route, um, a required hook with. Uh, no access to sirens, and you know I could have done a D machine ride or something like that. But yeah, I, that was just a lot of bashing my head against the wall. This one, um, I made a lot of rookie mistakes, but uh, I feel like I at least had a way forward uh, pretty much the entire time. And I want to say congratulations to uh, Imperial Dragon. I can't wait to uh, watch back the VOD and see where she uh, where she improved on me. I'm sure she ran a terrific race. Uh, yep, it was still a really close race, though. Yeah, um, both of y'all kind of struggled a little bit with that alt gauntlet. Kind of had to pull back, kind of reassess, and then try again. Yeah, uh, that was one of those where um, where I wanted to use that kind of as a mini grind in itself, uh, but I needed a, a couple more levels. I, I think I needed Palin to get to Quake, and that uh, really helped. Yeah, one thing that Imperial Dragon did do is you can cast stop on those eggs to keep them from hatching. And I thought I remembered uh, from running a seed once before that the very last one uh, in that gauntlet was an egg, so I knew I'd have time to kind of uh, get everybody up and, uh, and take care of that. Yeah, yeah, that worked out really well for you. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a that was a lot of fun. So um, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, before I forget, thank you to um, to you commentators and uh, uh, thank you to the restream team. Uh, I hope everybody had fun. Well, I sure did, and thank you so much for uh, for putting on a good race for us today. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay, and with that, I think we're about done here. Uh, I had fun. I hope you all had fun. Uh, the next restreamed race, uh, like I said, is 5 p.m. back here on the Free Enterprise channel. So come and check it out. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, Ellie, you got anything? Nope. Um, just once again, thanks to our back of house staff, Scala Kitty and Moonblaze Wolf, and thanks to our runners. And it looks like we're going to be uh, raiding in Venerable. Go over, um, send him your support, and remember chat, no spoilers. 